So today I'm going to show you how to place a stainless steel crown using the hall technique. But this time, instead of my other videos where we demonstrated the hall technique and used air water syringe and a slow speed brush to clean the teeth, in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to accomplish the same thing without generating any aerosol. Um, so first of all, you need to place separators. Normally we'll do that at the exam. So I prefer to place them with floss. So I have here the way that I like to do it. I'll thread two pieces of floss into the separator. And the separators can be purchased at any orthodontic supplier. These are from the orthodontic superstore. They come in two sizes, a small size and a large size. You can also get them in blue and white to make it easier for you to tell the difference. So this is how you do it. You take the separator and you're going to take two pieces of floss. You can do both at a, at a time or one at a time, whatever is easier for you, but just thread it through. So you got one. And then I do a second one. Okay. All right, so now you can stretch the separator. I have another video on the YouTube channel that shows me demonstrating this live on a, on a patient, so I highly recommend to watch that. Um, I also recommend to give some extra separators to the parent, have them watch how you do it. Um, you can also direct them to the video, but we put some in a little coin envelope and send them home with the parent. So just in case, let's say the kid eats something sticky, even though we told them not to, <laughs> and it falls out, or let's say they um, the teeth move and there's a lot of space and it falls out, or, or they pick it out, what, whatever, um, they could place one. That way they're not going to be bugging you with emergency calls. They can just place another one back. If it falls out the morning of the appointment, not a big deal because um, there's probably adequate space at that time. Another option if you prefer, you could use an orthodontic plier to place the separators. So you can just stretch it apart and then place it between the teeth. It's just not my personal preference, but use whatever you like, you have options. There's a smaller size. I like that for a contact like what you have between the primary cuspid and the first primary molar. That's usually a smaller contact. Sometimes it's a primate space and there's no contact and you don't even need two separators so that's always great. But in this case if there is in fact a contact you can place the separator. Just stretch this out and place it into the contact. Okay. One end will be under, one end will be uh, a little bit over, so it's as if the circle is around the point of contact. And then hold it in place with your finger. It's a little tricky because the wax floss likes to stick to itself, but just separate it out, hold it in place with your finger and slide it out. Okay, again, separate the floss. All right, and then you're gonna leave the separators for at least two days, ideally, about a week and that'll create room in between the teeth to accommodate the crown. The first thing you're gonna do is remove the separators. So you're just gonna use an explorer and just tuck it under an edge of the separator and you just gently remove it. Remember, this is a type of knot. You're not gonna see spacing between the teeth. So if you want to see real world spacing after separators have been placed, watch the other videos that shows it nicely. All right, so now you want to thoroughly clean the tooth. They've brushed at home, but maybe there's a little extra plaque. You could use a micro brush. See how I have water already to go? I don't want to use my air water syringe, so I could put some in a little dappen dish or a little paper cup, okay? And I can use that just to clean any plaque or food debris that might be behind. Some other options, if you want to get really fancy, you could use some of the cavity conditioner, the polyacrylic acid. You could place a drop, use a cotton pellet, and clean the tooth with that. Okay, so you, you have options, but just make sure that the tooth is, is nice and clean. Okay. So now you're 
you're ready to select the crown. And just as a general rule, we know the average primary molar prepped is typically a size four, right? So when you think of hall technique, just add one size up. So the average unprepped primary molar is a size five. So that's a great starting point if you're new to this technique. Now a type it on, I already know what size that is. I know that's a size five. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, that that's cheating, but I wanna show you now, let's say you were doing this on an actual patient, let's say this is a four, you know, you're gonna find crowns that are obviously too narrow mesiodistally, obviously aren't gonna go over the mesial buccal bulge. So that would be a reject. This is a six. So there's gonna be crowns where you can tell they just be, would be flapping in the wind. You, know, you don't want that either. So you wanna select a properly fitting crown. So I know that this perfect little type of don't tooth is gonna be a size five. But let's say there's any differences in the shape or sizing of the tooth, you wanna carefully select it just like you would on a prep tooth. So you might need to do a little bit of adjusting. So you could, for example, narrow it mesial distally using how plier, okay, where you just you squeeze it mesial distally. You can do that. You wanna make sure the margins are nice, okay? So you could take your crimper and go around and just crimp anywhere that you need to, to modify the, the shape and the fit of the crown. So just as if you were doing any other crown placement the conventional way, okay? You want a properly fitting crown. Now, when it comes to trying in the crown, um, of course, this is the typodont, so there's not a lot of space between the teeth, but if you've had separators in there for a couple of days or a week, you're gonna have lots of nice space, so this is much easier actually on, on a human than it is on the typodont. But um, some folks will just eyeball to see that it's gonna go down. You know, I prefer to seat it all the way because I wanna make sure that it, that it um, goes all the way down and that the margins are, are sealed, and you can make sure that you're covering all of the cavitations, right? And that you have nice margins. But you know, this, this technically is optional. Some people just put it almost all the way down, but just don't do the final snap. Um, but I, I wanna make sure that the contour, the margins are sealed nicely, that the, the lesions are, are completely covered. Um, so now you're ready to cement your crown. Now, the easiest way to do this is to use an auto-mixing glass ionomer cement. So that's what I'm gonna use for the demonstration. This is GC's Fuji Sem Evolve, um, where it has an auto-mixing tip, so it does all the work for you. Now, truth be told, usually I'm doing crowns with an assistant, and we will use the Fuji Sem 2, where you just click it out on your mixing pad and use your spatula to mix it. but. Um, for this demonstration, I'm gonna show you an auto mixing option, which just makes it a little quicker and, and easier. So you're gonna remove the cap, okay? Label side up, matching the label. <laughs> See, it says push, okay? So that just slides right on, and then you do push it down. It's kind of a dull click, but it'll click into place. It's hard to hear it. Oh, you probably could hear that. All right, so now it's ready to be loaded into the crown. And don't be stingy with your cement, okay? Fill the whole crown up to the top because you wanna fill in any crevices, cavitations in the tooth. You wanna fill the whole thing up. Don't be stingy. Okay, so load it to the top. I like to just flip it onto my finger, okay? And orientate it to the direction of the tooth. seat it on there. You could use your finger to press it into place. You could have the patient bite it into place. Let's say they're not as cooperative or they give a funky bite. <laughs> like you tell them to bite, they do an underbite. You could. I like to use a band seater. Okay, so just press it on there and it just snaps right into place. Okay, there we go. So now we want to remove the excess cement. So 
we don't want to use an air water syringe so what I'll do is just use some gauze and I have my little cup of water and wet the gauze and just wipe away the excess cement. See? So wipe away the excess cement thoroughly. Okay. And just like you would with any crown that you place, just clean all the excess cement away. Okay. And of course, you could also use your micro brush if you want to clean excess cement away. And of course you want to floss the contact. So you can also place little knots in the floss. That's a nice trick to help get all the cement out. Thank you.